So my name is Jeff Cross. I'm the editorial director of ISSA Media, and I'd like to welcome to our program today the very first facilities who, who have obtained GBAC STAR accreditation status. So we have with us uh, Brett Mitchell. He's the general manager of the Overland Park Convention Center of Kansas. Welcome, Brett. Tell us who, raise your hand there so people can see who you are. Good to have you, Brett. We also have Frank Poe. He's the executive director of the Georgia World Congress Center in Atlanta. Frank. And last but not least, Dominic Bruno is the director of facility operations for the Georgia World Congress Center. So Dominic and Frank, you work together there in Atlanta. And Brett, you're in Overland Park, Kansas. That's right. So what I'd like to do is just to have you for a moment tell us about your facility, maybe some unique points about it, and why you decided to pursue GBAC STAR accreditation. And maybe Brett, we'll start with you. You know, happy to. We are a, a convention center in suburban Kansas City and uh, recently named one of the top 20 convention centers in North America by Exhibitor Magazine and, and the best small convention center in, in North America. And so really we, we came to this process um, through the eyes of the small venue. And um, really Frank and Dominic and, and, his, and their team did all the heavy lifting. Um, but we were, we were testing this to see how scalable the process would be. Um, and uh, it was a great experience. Um, they were truly gonna benefit our convention center in Overland Park. Yeah, glad to hear it. Yeah, I know you all work together even though you're in different centers, but you collaborated. So uh, Frank or Dominic, what do, you, what do you have to add to that? Tell us about your facility and why you pursued the accreditation. Sure, uh, Dominic, sorry with you. I'll take this one and then it uh, looks like the balance are gonna be in your wheelhouse. <laughs> that sounds good. The, uh, uh, our facility uh, is uh, uh, one of the top four and five facilities in, in the uh, US. We, uh, cover over 200 acres uh, in downtown Atlanta, the state um, authority uh, governed by a board of 15 members and we're composed of 4 million uh, gross square feet of uh, building space. Uh, some of the unique features is that we're the caretakers and operators for Centennial Olympic Park, which was the 1996 legacy park when the uh, Olympic Games of uh, Atlanta hosted at that time. And we also uh, own Mercedes-Benz Stadium, home to the Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta United. Uh, they operate that facility, but we function as the quote, owner of the complex. We have over uh, 7,000 parking spaces on campus. And then by contract with the separate board, we also manage the Savannah Convention Center in Savannah, Georgia, which is a, a smaller facility of 300,000 square feet of uh, exhibit space uh, there in, uh, across the, the historic district on the, on the river. Our pursuit is I, of GVAC star accreditation came really twofold. One is byproduct of the process where Brett and I were asked to share on behalf of our association to uh, secure and develop uh, protocols and templates for other convention centers and other venues to utilize uh, and pursue uh, a GBAC star accreditation. That was one element, but the other element I think at the time, and this was, it was a back in April uh, this year, um, you know, we were trying to figure out you know, what are going to be those uh, um, best practices in the area of sanitation, hygiene, and certain training. And so by virtue of our association, asking Brad and I to chair a task group that was specific to the uh, two-back star accreditation, uh, we certainly embraced it as really that best practice approach for hygiene and sanitation with, uh, within a convention center complex. And so um, we, we see it as a, a really a, a message to the industry uh, as more convention centers embrace it for the convention trade show side, that if you can host a meeting in a clean and, and safe environment, um, and, uh, and, and we're ready, I know Brett's ready for uh, to, to get back into the complex. So, uh, and 
we see this as one of those pillars of being able to address those types of concerns that meeting planners would have in, in, that, in that particular area. Very cool. Yeah, I know uh, uh, the process takes a bit of time, but you guys have got there. You've made it. So congratulations on that. Uh, let's, let's go to you, Dominic. I guess uh, you, you get the rest of the questions according to what Frank just said. <laughs> so, you're the facility manager. What does this mean for you, for your workers and visitors? Uh, for, for everyone, it is, uh, our, our, it is our vision that uh, our facility and like facilities and other, other venues and other buildings of different types that agree to pursue this accreditation and ultimately achieve this accreditation sort of mutually agree on the pursuit of science and facility operation. And, uh, and, and sound practice, uh, sound guidance uh, through the consultation of experts and scientists to help us make the right choices and use the right products and utilize the right procedures and the right terminology. Um, really, in the end, it's about education. Uh, it's about uh, expectations. And for our workers, it's about uh, empowerment. It's about giving all of the avail available tools in their toolbox to be able to meet the challenges that they face day in and day out. And then for our visitors and our clients, it is a sort of a framework that we can use to quickly agree on what it is that we are endeavoring to, um, to create and to provide as a service provider to those customers and uh, meet in the middle and in that middle is uh, increasing consumer confidence as we return to normal operations or as close to normal operations as we can get. Sure, that consumer confidence is in demand, I know that. Uh, Brad, anything to add to the same question? What does this mean for your workers and your visitors? You know, I think for us, the, the thing that comes to mind is, is that we care. You know, I think as an industry, we've always done a great job of, of providing a clean and sanitized venue. This is a different world, and I, I think what this means is that we care to protect our, our employees, we care to protect our guests um, from the potentials of an infectious disease, and we will go to any lengths to do that, and, and I, I want to applaud our, our industry association leadership and Brad Main in particular for seeing that you know, this is too big just for us to muddle through on our own. You know, as Frank alluded to, we needed an independent third party um, that's science-based, that, that got us away from listening to salespeople um, and, and got us into, uh, I think, a, what will become a new normal. And so for me, I just think it, it, it proves that we care, um, not only as independent venues, but as an industry. Thank you for that. Um, good stuff. Here's a question for you guys, and we want your brutal honesty here. Maybe we can start with you, Dominic, on this. Uh, what was the most challenging part of implementing the GBAC STAR accreditation process? Uh, I, I, I guess it, 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 to a certain extent, it is sort of organizationally dependent. <clears throat> uh, we did collaborate uh, across multiple venues. And we all have our strengths. You know, we all operate in different regulatory environments, different uh, organizational structures, different uh, enabling legislation or private entities, right? So because of that, uh, all of us had unique strengths in this process. Um, you know, strong documentation and strong historical uh, behavioral uh, consistency by the organization in one area of GBAC's focus, maybe four or five elements of GBAC's focus, but maybe two or three other elements were, are not something that they typically have to focus on because perhaps there's a contractor that takes care of that or perhaps there's a, a city component that takes care of that. Whereas maybe one of our partner venues, uh, it's the reverse, right? Where they are on the hook to, to take care of that. So I think <clears throat> more than it being the hardest challenge, uh, one of the greatest positives that came out of our collaboration, the way that we went about this with our working group and our industry partners, is that collectively we shared uh, best practices among all of those 20 elements so that we raised the level of all of our submissions and all of our knowledge through uh, collective intelligence and collective history and experience. Um, 
I can say that one of the areas that I am eager to see the organizations uh, around the, the country and really around the globe and the sort of the cleaning industry in general continue to progress is the concept of verification of clean, the science-based verification component of the work that we are now required to do. Or, and, 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 and Brett mentioned it, most of our event venues have maintained a level of cleanliness during event operations and, and a level of event, a level of staffing and procedural effectiveness during event management out of, uh, out of uh, requirement, uh, really out, out of necessity, given the, what we do for a living, that this, this was not daunting in the way that it might be for another, uh, another industry. However, the nature of our industry is all time bound. It is like a lot of us, right? It is all time bound. It is speed. It is uh, volume. It is large capacities, right? That's what we, that's the world we live in and applying this sort of uh, diligent and detailed and verified approach to the cleaning operation. A lot of those skills were involved in prior operation but the level of verification that is now required for the procedural for the procedures to be effective, specifically regarding disinfection, uh, there there seems to be a lack of, of uh, or let's just say it's in the development stages of providing field testing equipment. Um, certainly, there are devices that are out there, but on the broad scale, I'm looking forward to organizations getting creative and, uh, and the product implementation growing and product development continuing to develop so that we can, have, we can enable our team up uh, with the tools they need to feel confident in the work that they are doing throughout the GBAC STAR program procedures, but just in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, you know, we talked about consumer confidence. You can listen to any media outlet on any platform and recognize that our general population knows more about cleaning or thinks they know more about cleaning now than they ever have before and actually want to talk about it. And what that, I love that. That's a great thing. But what that means is that we need to, uh, we need to be able to provide the information that our customers are asking for. And uh, that's, that's probably to me, one of the more challenging components of GBAC star is 10 months from now, how, what tools are we using to communicate with each other that we are doing what we uh, endeavor to do and that we are continuing to do and continuing to improve on what we built during this accreditation process. Well, thank you for that. Uh, how about you, Brett? What, what was challenging for you with this implementation? You know, for us, it was pretty simple because uh, Frank and Dominic carried, like I said, the, the, all the burden and they did really the bulk of the work and listening to Dominic, you can understand um, uh, why we all feel so good about it and the knowledge that he brought and Frank and sharing our, our, our task force. Um, but for me, I think the challenge lies ahead. Um, as Dominic was saying, um, it's great to have a plan and it was a wonderful process to go through, um, but it's going to be the execution of that plan. I think it's going to be the continual assessment of the plan, the measuring of the plan, the adjustments to the plan, that's really going to push us away from maybe a lot of the things that we have historically just done in our business, um, just because that's the way we've always done it. And I think breaking those molds for, for some of us is, is going to be a little challenging but I think everyone sees the importance of it. Um, and, and I think we'll be able to push through that. But I think the challenge lies in the execution and, and the ongoing um, effort to improve. If I can follow on with that, I, and I don't uh, question anything at all, because I think that what Brad and Dominic says is right on target. Uh, but one of the things from a, a different level is the, the risk assessment component um, because I think each, certainly Brad and, and us and the other uh, venues that have, particip have been participating in creating some of the content and, and uh, templates for others to pursue, that central component really caused, I think, each of us to look more critically at what the risks are in the area of 
infectious disease control and things that we can control as a venue. Uh, you know, I, to me, that sort of stood out as something that will be a, an important element for each venue as they go forward is, is really doing a critical assessment of, of risk in this area of hygiene and sanitation. So I, I certainly applaud GBAC for having that as a central element within the overall certification process. I think it's going to bring a lot of lasting value. And to Brett and Dominic's point about implementation, always going back and setting in motion the uh, procedures of saying, you know, a, a ongoing evaluation of processes and from a you know risk risk based uh, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So I did. I was going to ask you about the easiest thing about the process. I think you kind of covered some of that. It's you got through it and uh, um, you're there. Was there anything that stands out though, as far as yeah, this was easy for us. You know, we we were already doing it. Dominic. Uh, I, I'd, I'd go back to the fact that uh, the concept of a risk assessment, while the, the, the concept of it is embedded in the framework of operating a venue of any size and any type from the safety and secure, the traditional definition of safety and security at venues, um, many of us have gone through that process from a venue safety security risk assessment uh, lens. So the, on a conceptual level, it made a lot of sense, right? On a conceptual level, the concept, uh, the industry as a whole has gone through a similar concept on that side. Um, but I would also say that uh, in order to do what we all do, uh, all of us have to have procedures in place already. So uh, I think for us, in a lot of cases, let's just say, for example, a waste management procedure, a waste, a waste policy. Well, uh, we're a lead gold building, right? So we, we've done all that homework a long time ago and we were able to leverage that. And so in that way, I think GBAC Star allowed us to use a lot of areas where, as I mentioned in one of the earlier questions, where we have, we have strengths as venues because of our circumstances, we were able to leverage those uh, in the context of this accreditation to assist us with uh, approaching our end goal, which was to achieve the accreditation. So. Um, it was certainly not overall a, a breeze, but there, there were elements of the accreditation process that allowed us to be successful because of work we had already achieved in other areas of our business. Sure, that's good to hear that you're already ahead of the game. And it sounds like collaboration is, is a big part of your success for both, for all of you involved. Brett, anything to add about that? Anything that stood out as, yeah, this was easy to do? You know, I, I think for me, um, I think as we go forward, the use of the templates that are being developed for each sector of our industry, convention centers, arenas, stadiums, performing arts centers, amphitheaters, um, being able to start from that launch point. Um, I, I, I actually did that. I was the guinea pig for our working group where uh, again, the heavy lift was being done by, by Frank and Dominic, and, and I played the role of, okay, let's see, can I customize the template? And is it scalable? scalable? And will it work not only for uh, a, a large venue like, like the Georgia World Congress Center, but will it work for a small venue like the Overland Park Convention Center? And I found that process to be fantastic. It, it, it wasn't uh, a killer. Um, I can't imagine having done that on my own, um, starting at page one and developing that without the aid of the template. So that for me, and I think for our industry as a whole, is going to make it much easier, but more importantly, I think it's going to make the program much more broad. Um, you're gonna see a much greater um, adoption of the GBAC um, star accreditation because these templates exist. So you mentioned templates, I assume, uh, well, if I was a convention center or a venue, I'd probably be coming to you asking about those templates. So. Absolutely, people already have. <laughs> you know, that makes it so much easier. And it's really cool to hear that you guys have developed this and uh, as part of the program. 
Okay, here's another question. What is one thing that your facility has done differently due to the impact of this accreditation? Dominic, you want to tell us yours? Sure. Um, I think the most obvious one is that we talk about this a whole lot more than we ever did before. Um, doesn't matter what job you have, doesn't matter what role you serve in our organization. Uh, people use the phrase GBAC star. They know what ISSA is. They, uh, they are learning and want, there's an appetite to learn about what does that mean? Uh, there are more people in this building right now that understand that disinfection and sanitizing and cleaning are different than probably at any point in the history of the organization simply because of the subject matter. So I think for us, it is, you know, we have certain requirements of training of folks that aren't even in the cleaning operation, but they are going through the training so that they know how to talk about it. They know what we are doing. They, when a customer asks, they know what the procedures are. And then, and then there's also elements of this program of, of basic infection control procedures that do fall within the scope of work for every single person simply because they work as part of a team. And um, so for me, I think it's that. It's the broadening of the definition of the role of stereotypical cleaning, but also infection control procedures across our organization, regardless of uh, position, uh, title, or uh, level. Good. And Brad, how about you folks? What have you done differently because of this accreditation? I think our approach has just been much more strategic. You know, um, and, and getting out of the, well, this is just the way we always do it. Here's a list, and, and we just know this is, this is how we clean and sanitize our venue. In addition to what Dominic just spoke about and the focus on disinfection and the understanding of that, um, for us, it's been just the, the strategic approach, the science-based approach. Um, in our industry, for far too long, we've relied on um, information that receive, we receive from salespeople because this conduit has not been available to us. Um, I think that's been the biggest difference that we have seen and that we expect to see moving forward. Um, yeah, not only in our venue, but as an industry. So my last question is directed to Frank. What would you tell other facilities who are thinking about GBAC Star accreditation? I highly encourage them to pursue the certification, uh, notwithstanding the fact that a lot of our venues are, are suffering through the, you know, the uh, expense uh, containment and uh, activities or lack of activities in their venue. But as, as we get through this as an industry, we're collectively embracing a sanitation hygiene protocol process that will make us much stronger as an industry in partnership with the customers that we're gonna to expect to see come back into our venues uh, soon.